Happy Easter, boys and girls. Yes, it is Easter. He has risen. He has risen indeed. Boys and girls, today we celebrate one of the best, best times of all. Last Sunday, we celebrated Jesus' coming into the town and people put palm branches down and they sang, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then throughout the week, we know that Jesus was doing many miracles and healing the sick, feeding people, and trying to share with his friends, his disciples, how much he loved them and what he knew was going to happen towards the end of the week. Boys and girls, it took us to Thursday, which we what we call Maudy Thursday. And on Thursday, all of his friends, his 12 disciples met together in the upper room and they had what we call the Last Supper. The Last Supper because Jesus knew that within 24 hours, he was going to go through some pretty horrific stuff, some pretty bad stuff. And so boys and girls, that night he had bread, he broke the bread and he had wine and he had his disciples share that. And he told them, remember, when you eat the bread and you drink the cup, remember, this is my body and my blood that was shed and broken for you. Boys and girls, the disciples didn't understand, but they were like, okay. And then boys and girls, one of his disciples betrayed him. The disciple Judas went to the Pharisees and told the Pharisees where they could find Jesus. And they, Judas was given 30 pieces of silver. 30 pieces of silver. He sold out his best friend for 30 pieces of silver. Well, boys and girls, back in the upper room, Jesus asked just a few of his disciples to go with him to the garden to pray. Oh, boys and girls, remember we made our Easter gardens last week, and we had flowers on each side of the road that went down the middle. Boys and girls, Jesus prayed in that garden, and he was so distraught, and he said, God, if there be any other way to save these people from their sin, please, Lord, show me. But then he said, but God, not my will, but yours. In other words, if there was no other way, Jesus was willing to do whatever it took. And why, boys and girls? Because he loves you and he loves me. And he knew that the only way that our sin Sin is anything we say, think, or do that doesn't please God. And we were born with that want to, to do the wrong thing. And Jesus knew that the only way that our sin could be forgiven would be through the shedding of his blood. So boys and girls, while he was in that garden, Judas, like I said, Judas betrayed him. And the Pharisees came and the soldiers came to that garden and they arrested Jesus. And they took him into the town and there they mocked him, they beat him. Boys and girls, they put a crown of thorns on his head. They put a purple robe on his body, trying to make fun of him, trying to make people say, yeah, you wanted a king, we'll give you a king. Here's his purple robe and his crown. But boys and girls, what they didn't understand was he was a king. He is our king. And so after they mocked him and they beat him, then boys and girls, they took him up to the hill of Golgotha. And on that hill, he had to carry his cross from town all the way up to the top of the hill. And when he got up there, they laid him down on that cross. And boys and girls, he willingly did that. He let them put nails in his hands and in his feet and then they hung that cross up on that hill. That's called a crucifixion, boys and girls. People who were put on crosses, they died. 
after a few hours from not being able to breathe well. And that's what happened to Jesus. But boys and girls, before he died, there were two other men that were on crosses. But those two other men, they did bad things. They stole things. And they deserved the punishment of crucifixion. But Jesus had done nothing wrong. He didn't deserve to be crucified. But yet, when Pontius Pilate asked the crowd, what should I do with Jesus? They all shouted, crucify him, crucify him. So boys and girls, Jesus was put on that cross. They took a sign, the Roman soldiers did, and they pounded it into the top of the cross and it said, King of the Jews. Again, trying to mock him, but he was the King of the Jews. He's your King and he's my King. Boys and girls, after several hours, Jesus took his last breath and he looked up to heaven and he said, it is finished. Before he did that, though, boys and girls, he looked at the crowd and he said to his father, God, he said, God, forgive them for they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, they didn't realize the importance of what they were doing that day. Jesus died when he died on that cross. His friends took him down and they placed him in a tomb. A tomb is a grave, but it's in like the side of a cave. And so they placed him there and the Roman soldiers rolled a huge stone in front of it because they didn't want anybody coming during the night and taking his body because Jesus had told everyone, guys, in three days, I will come back to life. I will rise again. Well, the Pharisees didn't want to hear anything of that. And the Roman soldiers were afraid that, you know, if somebody comes and takes his body, that's going to make people think that he really did rise from the grave. So we better put the stone here. And they sealed it tight. It was such a big stone. Nobody could move it. So all of his friends and his family, they all went back to their homes. And the next day, during the day of the Sabbath, as the Sabbath was ending, Women who were close to him, Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, they went and bought spices. They wanted to go to Jesus' tomb the next morning to put spices on his body because they didn't have time before the Sabbath when he had died and they put him in the cross or in the tomb. So they went to get spices. When they got those spices, boys and girls, they were walking on their way to the tomb and they were thinking, how are we going to get that stone rolled away? How are we going to put the spices in there? Ah, we'll figure it out when we get there. Boys and girls, they didn't realize. But at daybreak, as the sun was coming up, there was a large noise. The Roman soldiers that had been guarding that tomb fell on their face, and that stone was rolled away. And Jesus was gone. Now, the women got to the tomb and they went in and they're like, where have you taken him? Where is my savior? Where is my king? Where is my Lord? And the Roman soldiers, they just, uh, they took off. And all of a sudden, an angel appeared and they said, woman, he said, woman, why are you crying? Someone has taken my Lord and I don't know where he is. Please, if you know, please tell me so I can go to him. Mary, no one took your Lord. It is I, I rose from the grave. It was Jesus. And Mary was so excited. He said, go tell the others, I'll be back but go tell the others. And so Mary did. And the other disciples, they ran to the tomb. Well, Jesus had already gone, but he was going to come back and meet with them in the upper room. Boys and girls, because of what Jesus did, you and I can have our sins forgiven and we can live forever with him and God in heaven. Boys and girls, we're going to open up with a word of prayer and then we're going to get into our eggs. Dear God, oh, how we praise you for this day. How we thank you that you were willing to give your only son, Jesus, 
that whosoever believes that he died on the cross and rose again, that he loves us, should not perish, Lord. That means that we won't die without eternal life in you. Oh God, thank you so much for what you've done. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, boys and girls, our resurrection packets that you got, you probably thought, Miss Donna, what in the world? These eggs are all empty. And boys and girls, I'm just going to go through real quick what we need to do. In your packets, you have an instruction sheet right here. And what you're going to do with mom and dad or grandpa and grandma, whoever is there with you, you're going to cut out these strips. It tells you resurrection egg one, resurrection egg two, three, four, all the way through to 12. You're going to cut those strips out. On your eggs that you have, everybody has 12 eggs. And one of those eggs is a clear egg. And you can determine what you want to do with that clear egg. If you want to make it number 12 or if you want to make it a different number. Miss Donna went through and already numbered her eggs. A magic marker really works well. And you just put numbers from 1 to 12 on each of these eggs, okay? And then after you've cut out all of the strips, you'll notice that you have a packet of goodies here. And in this packet, there's a flower, there's a piece of cracker or bread, there's a perfumed cloth, there's a sign, there's purple cloth, there's a cross, there's nails, there's dimes, and there's a rock and a flower. So you've got all different kinds of things. Those things are going to go in your eggs. So boys and girls, for the first one, the strip of paper says, Scripture is Mark 11, 8 to 9. But the story that goes behind that verse is, When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the people waved branches. Remember? Now, in that little bag, you have something that would go in that first egg. It's a plastic palm branch. And so you put the palm branch into that egg with the paper. And now you've got your first egg all done. And then you go through. Boys and girls, at the end of each strip, there's a verse. And it explains what the story part is. The thing is, boys and girls, it's not just a story. This is true. This is life. This is exactly what happened to Jesus and his disciples. And boys and girls, it's exactly what can happen with us if we believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again. And that's how why we have Easter. So you have each one here and... We talked about number two egg. <laughs> Would have been there. Number two egg. We talked about um, Jesus going to um, his friend's house. And while he was there, a woman came and she poured perfume on his head. Perfume. Why did she do that? Well, the disciples were getting a little angry and people standing around thinking, you're wasting that perfume. We could have sold it. Yeah, probably Judas was the one that said that. But you know what, boys and girls? She knew that he was the Christ and she also knew that he would die soon and she wanted to prepare his body for burial. And so you have a perfumed, mm, smell that. You have a piece of cloth that's been perfumed. So you put number two slip of paper and the cloth in the egg. Continue on with number three, and that's going to be a piece of cracker. And you'll understand as mom and dad read to you why. That was the bread that we talked about. And then egg number four, Jesus went to the garden to pray. And so what do you think is going to go in there? Yes, it's going to be that flower. Boys and girls, you put the flower in number four. And then resurrection five egg. Oh, resurrection five egg. 
that one is because of Judas. And it talks about how he was supposed to be one of Jesus' special helpers. Well, instead, he helped the other men and they arrested Jesus. And in there is your three dimes. The three dimes represent 30 cents. But remember, Judas sold Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. And so that goes in number five. And then you continue, boys and girls, number six. When the soldiers arrested Jesus in the garden and they had beat on him, they also did something to mock him, to make fun of him because people thought he was a king. So they put a piece of purple cloth, purple cloth in his, um, on him so that he would look like he was, <laughs> I'm looking around here for number six. I don't think that's it. There it is. And so they put a piece of purple cloth on him. Purple cloth goes in number six, boys and girls, so that he had a robe fit for a king. But he was the king, wasn't he? And then you continue on, boys and girls, to number seven. Number seven, oh, boys and girls, this is a sad one. But number seven, remember Jesus went, I'm sorry, number seven, is the cross. After they beat on him, they had him carry his cross up on top of the hill. And boys and girls, that goes in number seven. And then number eight, once they got up there, they had him lay down on it, and then they took nails, and they pounded them in his hands and his feet on that cross. Number eight. Number nine, boys and girls. Number nine is the sign, King of the Jews, that the soldiers pounded into the top of the cross. Number 10, boys and girls, number 10 is when Jesus died on the cross, his friends put his body in the tomb and then remember what they put over top of that opening? A rock, the stone that nobody could move away, mm, but God could. And then number 11, boys and girls, number 11 is the next morning, remember? The women that had been with Jesus brought spices and they put the spices, they wanted to put spices on Jesus' body, but the stone was in the way and they didn't know how they were going to do it. But when they got there, remember boys and girls, when they got there to the tomb, and that's what's in number 12, he wasn't there. The stone was gone. Jesus' body was gone because Jesus had rose from the dead. With these boys and girls, you can put all the items into the different eggs and then go through and see if you can share Jesus' story with those around you. You can hide the eggs and see if you can find them in the order that they are. Boys and girls, you have a great day today. It is a wonderful day to be God's child. We love you. We praise God for you. We are praying that this ends shortly. And boys and girls, have a great week. Happy Easter. He is risen. He is risen indeed.